Hello, it's Crack here with the Community Voted Breakdown for Flails, a super off-meta weapon. First up, I want to thank any of you who clicked into this video, even if you don't use flails, or think they absolutely suck. I know flails isn't a popular weapon type at all, and it's thought to be one of the weakest. It would be easy for me to just say, yeah, flails suck, and move on too, but I don't think this is the right mentality nor attitude to have. I don't want to just dismiss something without careful examination. I think anything deserves a chance, so let's see if they actually suck that much, and if possible, whether or not there are any ways to make them work. I will be splitting the discussion up into unique and regular flails. The regular flails will be split into these categories because of the similarities these infusions share. If you have a question on some of the things I mentioned, these two videos will probably help you understand the optimization done in this video. Let's get started by examining aspects other than attack rating, otherwise known as AR. First of all, flails don't exactly have the longest range, and the ranges of these flails are all quite similar. Next, let's take a look at the motion values, or damage percent of the flail movesets, and check in game to see if there are any differences. But sadly, flails all have the same crap moveset. The only bonus is that it can be parried, just like whips. The problem with this is most PvE enemies do not parry, and people in PvP must be running parry for this to matter. Nothing to write home about so far. So, are there actually any good points about flails? Well, yes actually. Next, I'm going to be showing a spreadsheet that's a bit brighter, just as a warning. The most common breakpoint people aim for is the 61 poise breakpoint in PvP. A good point for flails is, other than its one-handed attacks, all its other moves do more than 61 poise. It means that if people optimize for 61 poise, you can still stagger them, whereas it would take an extra hit with some of the more popular weapon choices like spears and katanas. Furthermore, the maximum poise we can get right now is 133, with the full bull gold set plus the bull gold's talisman, and any two of the flail's hits will stagger even the max poise player while some moves directly deal more than 133 poise damage. Two-handing in general isn't great, so I suggest power stancing, but honestly, the power stancing moveset doesn't make flails much better either. One of the better moves is the power stance jumping attack, which is honestly pretty much the saving grace for a lot of the other off-meta weapons like hammers. Other than that, the crouching power stance attack is also not bad. The other moves of your power stance attacks are delayed, so you essentially swing one flail long after the other has already been swung. But there is only a short delay between the two hits for the crouching power stance attack. One more thing is, flails do more stamina damage than many of the other quicker weapons, like the katana or the spear. But this shares the same issue as its unparryable property. The enemy has to be running a shield for it to matter. The final attribute flails have going for them is, like the regular katanas, the regular flails all have bleed built into them. Status effects are quite strong in Elden Ring, and this bleed is very welcomed for the poor flails. And with that, instead of examining the unique flails first, like I usually examine the unique weapons, I'm going to examine the regular weapons first this time. For the regular flails, we have the chaining flail, the knight rider flail, and the regular flail. Starting with the heavy infusion, we immediately see that the chainlink flail is the best option in this instance because it already scales better to strength at base, while the other flails scale better to dexterity. Nothing too surprising. The same goes for fire, which is better at lower strength investment levels, but worse than heavy at higher strength investment levels due to defense calculations and split scaling. This is the same for other weapon types as well, and if you don't know why, let me repeat that link to my defense calculation video in the description. As for Keen, the Knight Rider flail definitely wins out, especially because it has less weight than the Chainlink flail. But what is surprising is the Chainlink flail actually scales decently well on Keen, despite scaling better to strength at base. Of course, it still has a higher AR on Heavy, but it is a property worth noting for a future video on weapon art mechanics. <clears throat> Don't understand why? Like and subscribe and you'll eventually find out. For lightning infusion, Chainlink Flail actually beats the Knight Rider Flail, which makes the lightning infusion a really good choice for Chainlink Flail if you don't want to use statuses. In fact, 
you can even expect a lightning infusion chaining flail to do about as well with average PvP defense at the AT dexterity level versus Keen, which doesn't usually happen. The kind of quality you get from quality infusion in Elden Ring definitely leaves something more to be desired at meta PvP levels. It is acting perfectly within expectations. It is still worth it for pure raw damage at max level PvE. But other than that, there isn't much to be discussed. If it is for PvE you're using flails for, you can very effectively use a buff like the Blood Flame Blade on a quality infused flail for good damage at endgame. Magic infusion as per usual is mostly for a magical weapon art while mainly being a caster. But here is where we need to discuss another weakness of the flails, which is that it has a more narrow selection of Ash of Wars. Because many Ash of Wars require certain weapon types and flails don't meet these requirements, it has a narrower selection of Ash of War. And since the flails basic one-handed moveset isn't great, flails would hardly be your first choice when it comes to main-handing a weapon and off-handing a staff. Plus, there is actually a good unique option for intelligence-based flail users in the unique section. Overall, I wouldn't worry about the magic infusion. The cold infusion, on the other hand, is a good choice. Notice, the Chainlink Flail and the Knight Rider have similar AR, but one scales to Strength and the other one scales to Dexterity. Furthermore, the Knight Rider is lighter in weight, which should definitely be taken into account. I would say, both of these Flails are about equally as good, at least as good as Flails can be. Flame and Sacred falls under the same issue as Magic Infusion does. It suffers from the Flail's poor selection of weapon art choices and poor one-handed moveset. I don't recommend it. Since Blood Infusion overrides instead of adding to the original base bleed, Blood Infusion is a horrible choice as it removes the only saving grace of flails, which is having base bleed. Which is why I personally would suggest going for either Cold or Poison for another status effect instead, or a Cult for more bleed while keeping a high AR. Talking about Poison, this is basically a good choice for an offhand flail for your power stance. Sadly, there are also other weapons with base bleed like katanas or spears that just have a better moveset. Comparatively speaking though, the base bleed definitely gives flail an advantage over something like a hammer or an axe. Finally, a cult. This is a good option for flails to capitalize on their base bleed because a cult works well with weapons that have base bleed by giving them both status scaling and more AR. The chainlink flail actually performs about as well as a knight rider in this case. The Knight Rider has higher dexterity requirements, while the Chain Link requires more endurance for the heavier weight. Overall, we quickly look through the regular flails. While they look alright for PvE, their Ash of War and Infusion scaling doesn't provide them any extra advantage other more meta weapons wouldn't have. Therefore, the only thing we can now rely on is the Unique Flails, which both have unique weapon arts. For the Unique Flails, let's start with the Family Heads. Familial Rancor scales to both Dexterity and Intelligence it seems, because it has both a physical component and a magical one. But it scales harder to Intelligence even though it has crap magic damage. This makes this weapon very awkward, especially because the skulls from the weapon art doesn't fly nearly as far as Ancient Death Rancor. So I was at least expecting something that deals decent damage. But it just doesn't do a lot of damage because of its awkward scaling. Overall, because you lose very little damage on the weapon art if you just invest in dexterity. If you really want to use this weapon, just invest into dex. I feel like this is a big missed opportunity to make another weapon that scales to both intelligence and fate because the ranker spells are associated with the Prince of Death staff which scales to both intelligence and faith. As it is right now, this weapon is garbage. Next, we have the Nox Flowing Hammer. Wait a minute. Hammer? Yeah, okay. This isn't a flail, but just look at this weapon art. How can you tell me this isn't a flail? It's more a flail than other flails. Honestly though, the range and radius this weapon art gives makes it a decent fla- uh, I mean, hammer. I'm highly disappointed this isn't actually a flail. It would certainly be nice for From Software to actually buff these underused weapons, or at least give them more interesting options. Finally, we have a weapon I really adore after trying it out. This is probably the best flail, the Bastard's Stars. If you dismiss flails readily, you will miss out on this gem. Other than the jingling sound it makes, it also deals plus 20% bonus damage to void enemies, 
But this isn't the main point. The Bastard Star is a rare instance of a split scaling weapon with well distributed damage combined with a proper scaling on a focused stat. It has higher magical damage than physical, and its intelligence scaling is also the highest scaling stat it has. To top it off, its weapon art is great. Most people probably know the little brother of this weapon, the Wing of Astol, which has a weapon art that shares the same name, Nebula. What people might not know though is while their weapon art shares the same name, they are different weapon arts. Wing of Astol's Nebula is stationary and spreads a small curve of explosions in front of you. Bastard Star's Nebula dashes forward while swinging the flail. The flail attack itself can deal damage, and it leaves behind a 340 degree of explosions. It covers a super wide area and is good at punishing anyone who rolls into your range. I absolutely love this weapon art and the area control it provides. In PvE, both nebulas also do a great deal of damage, especially to larger enemies. But yeah, I had a lot of fun dueling with Bastard Stars, so I will be uploading a video of random clips from PvPing with it as a weapon showcase, and I will probably also do an optimized version of it in the future. But to summarize, Bastard Stars is a great intelligence-based weapon with a good weapon art. If you simply dismiss flails in general, you will definitely miss this gem of a weapon. As for the regular flails, they really do have a lot of issues holding them back, but if you are trying to make them work, you should probably take advantage of the cult infusion or the poison or cold infusion. As a bonus, lightning infusion also works quite well on the chaining flail. Hopefully, you understood something better about flails, even if the conclusion that they suck hasn't changed. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Krite, signing out.